let's talk a little bit about voltage drop. We have here a simple series circuit. We've got two bulbs set up, one right after the other, so power flows through the fuse, the switch, through the first bulb, through the second bulb, down to ground. Okay, pretty simple. Well, in any electrical circuit, there is voltage drop that occurs anytime voltage flows through resistance. Now, typically, um, the only resistance that should be there should be the resistance of your load or your loads. So there's resistance in this bulb and there's resistance in this bulb. What that means is that some of the voltage is going to get used up pushing the current through this bulb, and then the rest of the voltage should get used up pushing the current through this bulb. So we're going to, we're going to look at that. So we, we've got our meter over here. We're going to switch it on to volts. Okay, we've got our leads in the, in, the right, in the right ports there. And what we're going to do is we are going to measure voltage drop. Now, like I said, voltage drop should only exist where there is resistance. So if we measure voltage drop from, um, say, across a wire or a switch, we should see very little. Now, in addition to having our meter set up to read volts, we need to have the circuit on and functioning, which it is. So let's see what kind of voltage drop we actually get. We'll start out up here at our 12 volt tap. Now it doesn't matter too much which wire you put where. We're going to put our red lead right there and then we're going to put our black lead down here. So right now we are measuring the voltage drop on the positive side of this circuit. So that includes the fuse, the switch, and the wires. If you look at our reading you can see we have 48 millivolts. All right. So that's how much voltage it takes to push the current through just those wires, 48 millivolts. All right, well, that's not too much. That's not too bad. Let's move over to our ground side. Well, our ground side's pretty simple because it's really just going to amount to this, this single wire. We come to the most positive place on the ground side of the circuit, which is coming out of our bulb, okay? And we're going to place one lead there. And then we go to the most negative point in the ground which is right here at our ground tap. And then we look at our, our reading over there and it shows where we have 7.1 millivolts of drop on the ground side of this circuit. Okay. Now let's look at where the voltage is actually dropping because um, what we saw on the positive side and the negative side is hardly anything and that's good. That's how it should be. So we're going to measure the voltage drop then across our loads. So I place one lead right here where we're going into the load the other lead right here where we're coming out of this first load and you can see we're dropping 5.9 volts okay so 5.9 volts is being dropped that's probably or that should be half of the total voltage let's look at our second one our second bulb and see how it compares okay so 6.0 6.0 and 5.9 uh, not very different. All right, that is not significantly different. So we can essentially say those those numbers are are the same. Well, let's look at the the total the total voltage because Kirchhoff, um, who was uh, an old dead scientist that studied voltage and came up with a couple of of laws pertaining to the way voltage behaves in a circuit, says that the sum total of all voltage drops in a circuit should equal source voltage. So I'm going to put my, my red lead up there, my ground lead down here, and you can see we have just over 12 volts. Well, as you may recall, we were dropping about, now hold on a minute, I'm making good contact. We were dropping about 6 volts in the one bulb, or across the one bulb, and about 6 volts across the other bulb, so that gives us our 12 volts. So it must be true what Kirchhoff says, the sum total of the voltage drops equals the source voltage. Now why is this important? Okay, that's just the question that people ask all the time. Well, who cares about this stuff and what does this have to do with fixing a car? Well, anything electrical or pertaining to the fundamentals of electrical diagnostics is very important to diagnosing what's going on with a car. Let's say we had a bad switch. 
So there was a problem in our switch. The switch had resistance. That's usually what happens with the switch, is it gains unwanted resistance. The contacts in the switch will either go bad and not let current flow, or the switch goes open circuit. And if you think about it, an, a, a component that's, that's open is pretty much the same as a component that has tons and tons and tons of resistance. The circuit's going to act the same way either way. So if we had a bad switch here, then um, and we were doing that voltage drop test, we would see how much voltage is being used up in the switch. Now it should be none, or, ne or next to nothing. The, the, the specifications that we usually use on, on basic electrical circuits like this is no more than a half a volt dropped on the positive side of the circuit. So from here to here should be no more than half a volt. And of course we were way under that because we were, you know, what, I don't remember what the number was. We can measure it again. 48 millivolts. Okay, so that's 0 0.0. 4, 7 volts or 0 0.05 volts and our maximum is 0.5 volts. So we're talking about 50 milliamps versus or 50 millivolts versus 500 millivolts. So that's nothing. On the ground side, basic specification we cite is no more than 0.2 volts being dropped on the ground side. And we're, we're 0 0.007. So on the ground side we have hardly any voltage drop at all. So that's a good thing. That means that this circuit is working properly. Being able to check the power side of the circuit and the ground side of the circuit to make sure they're hooked up properly, the voltage drop test is the very best way. There is, there is no other way uh, that works as well. So that's why voltage drop is important.